Before reviewing the tank itself, I cannot ignore one thing about it. If you will be destroyed while playing Lorraine 40T, you will pay a lot. Currently, out of all tanks in the game, it has highest repair cost. When fully researched vehicle falls in battle, it can be resurrected by spending over 20,000 silver lions, which is at least twice more than endgame tanks. Why it is so expensive to repair Lorraine 40T? Actually, that's an easy question. It was answered during Russian stream with Gaijin CCO. Поэтому если что-то много реварда привозит, ну, много награды, то должно быть и риск. The logic here is simple. If tank on average makes a lot of silver lions by performing very well in battles, amount of silver lions required to repair it is also increased. This way you usually get bigger rewards for battles, but risk to lose more as well. From my personal experience after playing this tank, I can confirm it is good vehicle that performs better than average. Even I had more kills than death, that must mean something. But that raises another question I'll be answering for the rest of the video. Why is it so good? Because if you check tank's characteristics, you won't find anything unusual. Everything tank does can be done even better by some other tank. Tank's 100mm cannon shoots two types of shells. Useless, high explosive and useful armor piercing. AP round can penetrate up to 273mm depending on distance, so when attacking frontally you will have enough penetration, but only if you aim at armor plates that are not angled. Since slopes are more or less present on most of the vehicles, flanking will still be the most reliable way to engage enemies. Damage is just like you would expect from solid rounds, for the most part, destroys everything directly on projectile's way. But 15 kilograms in mass is enough to expect to create noticeable amount of spalling to deal some damage further away from impact point as well. For example, shooting cupolas might knock out nearby crew members, though it's nowhere near as effective as APHE rounds, so you might need more shots to destroy something this way. Overall, shell is quite usual. There are other tanks at this battle rating that can reach either bigger penetrations or deal more damage. One of the more unusual things the tank has is autoloader. Seven shells inside the mechanism and one in gun's breach will be ready to fire with only four seconds delay between shots. That compensates the lack of damage of AP projectile, allowing to quickly finish opponents with the next shot. Autoloader also forgives your mistakes. If you fail to penetrate or miss altogether, it will allow you to shoot repeatedly before opponent even had enough time to react. Or whenever you are facing multiple opponents at once, it will be much harder for them to take advantage of that, as the time gap when you cannot shoot back because of reload is very short. Though short reload is not unique feature. There are other vehicles that can fire with a very small delay or even both guns at once. On the other hand, all such tanks shoot hash or heat projectiles that have small muzzle velocity, while Lorraine 40T shoots armor-piercing projectiles that are comfortable to use even at long ranges. So maybe this is what makes tank effective? Ability to fire multiple shells in short period of time at any range? I suspect this is one of the main reasons, because if we look at similar vehicle AMX-50, we will find exactly the same gun with autoloader, and the tank also has way higher than average repair cost, but still not as high as Lorraine 40T, so there must be something else. Reason that made autoloader possible in this tank is oscillating turret where the whole upper part of a turret is moving together with gun and loading mechanism. But that also results in disadvantage when it comes to vertical guidance. Gun's depression is 8 degrees. That's only about 1 or 2 degrees less than most of other tanks at this battle rating. So you shouldn't feel significant difference. And compared to Soviet tanks, 
8 degrees might even be considered very good. While elevation is different story, it is comparable to Soviets, only 15 degrees, which is around 5 degrees less than everyone else. On a good note, turret rotation speed can reach up to 30 degrees per second, which is above average, and when engaging ground targets, you won't need that much elevation anyway. So despite having some limitations, moving the turret usually won't become a major problem. Unless you decide to attack planes with your machine gun, which is coaxial, with the same guidance restrictions as everything in a turret. But the machine gun is low caliber, so won't be very useful against light tanks that start to appear very often at higher tiers. And even against planes, firing the main gun round might be better choice. Lorraine 40T has one of the weakest armor you can find on medium tanks of similar battle rating. While armor plates have good angles that can ricochet some shells if you are lucky, most of the time even opponents with weaker guns will penetrate it easily as armor thickness around the tank is only 30mm and even where it has the most protection, in front, it's only 30 to 45. Even in the middle of a turret where these plates overlap, it won't be enough to resist anything more serious than SPAA. So if it's not the armor thickness that makes a repair cost so high, there is only one thing left. Armor thinness. The less steel plates tank carries, the more maneuverable it can be. Lorraine 40T can accelerate really quickly. On medium terrain, speed will quickly exceed 40 kph. It can move even faster on roads or downhill with a maximum speed limit of 60 kph. While there are even faster vehicles, Lorraine 40T is above average, even faster than some light tanks. So speed definitely adds up to repair cost as it not only allows you to flank easier but also capture the point at the beginning of a match without much competition. Reverse of 20 kph is also great and additionally tank has neutral steering making it very comfortable to move around the map. So summing up all said earlier, Lorraine 40T has advantage only in two areas. It is able to shoot armor piercing projectiles very quickly and at the same time has enough speed to be noticeably faster than majority of opponents. The tank doesn't have many other features like smokescreen, night vision, rangefinder or stabilizer, proving that at least at rank 4, where players already know the game, the most valuable are reload speed and vehicle's maneuverability. In arcade, despite having slightly lower battle rating, 7.0, Lorraine 40T was not performing so well, which is reflected by more than 3 times lower to repair cost. Since everyone hides behind cover, then shoots and hides back for reload, having autoloader is not as useful as having penetration advantage or the ability to one-shot opponents using KPHE shells. While you will still be one of the fastest tanks and at the beginning of the battle it will be easier to take good position and catch opponents unprepared, name tags will reveal your position when you are trying to flank, so speed advantage cannot be exploited in its full potential. At the same time you will meet heavier vehicles, so penetration might become even bigger problem. So just like any other tank with little armor, Lorraine 40T won't show its peak performance in arcade. Despite not being best at anything, the tank has advantages exactly where it needs them the most. It shoots and moves quickly. In other areas, it is at least not the worst. Vertical guidance is limited, but for the most part enough. Armor is thin, but not so thin to have hull break mechanics, and armor piercing shell is balanced between damage and penetration, while the rest of the features at rank 4 seems to have no significant effect in tank's effectiveness. I would rate Lorraine 40T 8 creative radiator designs out of 10. Since tank can both 
make kills and capture points at the beginning of battle, it is efficient tank to farm research points, but because of repair cost, one of the worst tanks for Silver Lions. It was noticeable that tank performs well, maybe even its repair cost is somewhat justified. But even with premium account, that is supposed to be more beneficial when repair costs are high, I was slowly losing money. If you are interested in how premium works, I even did some math explaining premium's influence on research points and silver lines gain in one of my first videos in the description.